Yes, I know what you're thinking. Another MacBook Pro video? But hear me out, I've decided to mimic a real day in the life workflow with the M1 MacBook Pro for productivity. So, I decided to get in my car, drive to my neighbor's mall, find the Apple store, ask for the base model MacBook Pro in one, paid for it, earned my soul, but went home, realized I had another package to my surprise who was the sponsor of this video, Sennheiser, went to my room, unboxed the Mac quickly, got rid of my custom PC, and docked the MacBook Pro. This here is the base model MacBook Pro with a new M1 chip running 8GB of RAM at 256GB of storage. Not quite the specs for a $1300 computer, but the real question is, how well does it perform for the average consumer? My name is Andres and today we're going to be pushing this thing to its limits. We've seen lots of Final Cut editing videos across YouTube, but surprisingly Premiere Pro can also be handled pretty well by Apple's emulation environment, Rosetta 2. For starters, my whole video project was not using proxies within my workflow. Currently, all the footage being manipulated comes from a Sony Alpha 7 Mark III shooting 4K at 24 frames per second. The program preview selector is set at one half, therefore I'm not running full image quality on the monitor preview. Within my timeline, I also have text overlays and Photoshop files. On top of that, all my clips are color graded since I shoot flat with HLG. I also have some clips containing warp stabilizer to get rid of some shakes and I even have a few effects on some frames. This includes calling cards, glitch effects and some motion blur. But I really wanted to present you just like a quick demo of what it is like to run Premiere Pro on Rosetta 2. On the m1 chip right now the scrolling of the timeline it's not the smoothest which you know might might be annoying for you it depends it's not that bad for me it's very doable editing this project right now is very very doable if i click play footage runs pretty well uh, there's no hassles or anything like that i do have a photoshop file being utilized right now if i open photoshop which is currently being open this is pretty much the file I have Lightroom running in the background just with this image right here, which is a pretty heavy image. Um, if you go on stuff that's not rendered, then you're gonna, even the, the playback is just, it's gonna struggle as you guys can see. Editing text, it's a pain. It's a pain editing text, I'm not gonna lie. Right now, I'm not even sure where, where I'm editing. See, it's, look at that, that's pretty freaking slow. So that is quite annoying. Uh, if you render this portion, it'll take time because I have a bunch of stuff open, including Chrome with some tutorials and another Chrome window. But other than that, you know, I have a few stuff over my videos, a few adjustment layers. I have all my footage right now is color graded with the Lumetri color. I have some warp stabilizer on footage. It's not bad at all. Even this effect calling card right here, obviously it's rendered, but it's not bad. It's editing videos guys on premiere pro is very 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 doable now i most often use lightroom when creating relevant content for my youtube channel i like to pair this with photoshop to be able to generate the final touches on my thumbnails and instagram posts and to add some excitement i of course mix all of this up with some spotify only if i'm not running 100 chrome tabs in order to watch some tutorials by now, we have Premiere Pro running in the background, Lightroom with a potential thumbnail for this video, and Photoshop in order to tweak this image to get rid of imperfections. Jumping into Lightroom, I'm simply going to demonstrate the workflow I go through when generating thumbnails for my videos, as well as here on the right, I have a Peter McCannon video rolling with a bunch of tabs on Google Chrome. I really want to see how this is going to be affecting performance. The very first thing I'd like to do is to add my preset which as you guys can see, it's this one right here. Crop the image. Tweak a bit of the exposure, the lighting, add some vignetting. Like that I can really focus on the Mac. And I think that the biggest feature of them all is the brush tool. As you guys can see, it's not so bad. I feel on my mouse that there is a tiny bit of lag, but not so much to really be noticeable. 
And now we can go ahead and tweak the image, add more exposure, some contrast, sharpen that a bit, saturation to really make it stand out for the thumbnail. And there you go. I would say that Lightroom job is pretty much done. We can go ahead and open this on Photoshop. And as you guys can see, it did take quite a bit of time to open on Photoshop. So that's something to take into consideration. Choose a spot healing tool and let's see how this is going to work. So you guys can see it's getting laggy. Oh, there you go. Take this brush, make it bigger and really erase that right there. Not so bad. You can always go ahead and try to get rid of these wires. Nothing's really lagging. Oh, now you can start to see that it takes quite a bit of time to generate something. This is probably the most awful way to be doing this, but it's for the purpose of the video. Now let's see what happens when we add some text. For example, M1, it's very quick dragging this. It's a bit laggy. Rotating, it seems to be fine. And skewing it is also fine. You can go ahead and use the brush tool to make this more realistic. And it's lagging quite a bit, but not so bad. You guys can see sort of produces these bubbles here. That's cause it's lagging a bit. Can go ahead and fix this portion by doing something like this. Very smooth, no lag at all. Pen tool works fine, text works fine. Everything looks very well done. We quickly save this and let's check it out on Lightroom. There you go, that was pretty fast. <laughs> And when it comes to productivity while working from home, well Sennheiser have been able to deliver a great pair of wireless earbuds that allows for total focus while tackling any task at hand. If you happen to be a university student, an office worker such as a web developer, an accountant, and so on, the Momentum True Wireless 2 can deliver great active noise cancellation to eliminate distractions. And while you might not always be comfortable at reduce unwanted sounds at all times, the transparent hearing mode allows you to hear your surroundings when you wish to do so. Most of my productivity work that requires forward processing, writing code, spreadsheet management, and graphic design is often achieved by a pair of great sounding earbuds that makes you hear the difference. The true wireless to allow me to achieve maximum productivity with great comfort or long wear with its customizable ear tips. And since I do work at my desk for long periods of time, I do not need to worry about battery. These earbuds deliver up to 7 hours of continuous playback and up to 28 hours with the charging case. Definitely a great add-on for your productivity workflow. Now let's take a step back and take a look at the productivity apps that we find ourselves using most of the time. I would say that usually my time is being dedicated to schoolwork, therefore I can quite explore the vast majority of apps including Microsoft Office, Notion, PDF, and a few other apps that allow me to accomplish my work. Currently, I'm working on a massive project that requires me to use a few programs altogether. I've been running a terminal process along with my coding editor for development, an Excel spreadsheet to record my program tests, Chrome when looking for code solutions, and PDF to refer to our own project documentation. On top of that, I throw in my favorite Spotify playlist or play the office on the background. Let me quickly show you the workflow of what I've been dealing with for the past three days. I have been using this whole workflow in order to get some school stuff done. Now I'm gonna open a terminal process. I'm gonna run my server in the background that is going to be connected to this. Also, I do have Chrome open and I have Netflix running in the background with the office. Of course, I have a bunch of tabs for my programming work and I do have my PDF running right here. If I wanna like go ahead, take a quick look of what to code on the left. 
that is running there fine we can also go ahead and open excel i've been using it to to just copy and paste some data or de depending on what i'm doing now that is fine and i can also show you guys the activity monitor of what we currently have so intellij is taking two gigabytes of ram i am taking quite a lot of memory and we are caching one gigabyte so yes, if eight gigabytes guys, we are getting pretty freaking close to threshold. Now in terms of workflow, I've been going really back and forth between my IDE and Google. I always type something like UDP Java and then I can maybe find an example code. And if I find something I like, I've already been on this page, I can go ahead and, and copy this because I love copy pasting code and pasting it here and hoping that it works and if it doesn't work i go ahead and delete it and now right here i'm actually missing a method that i am going to need for this homework we can go ahead and write public string exchange item you can write a string with customer id you can go ahead and use the item name you can copy this paste it in here there now the id is happy this is just crying because i don't i'm not doing something right but it's fine so as you guys can see it's, it's always this we can go ahead and run the server that is connecting to terminal oh now this is not liking this so we can go ahead and comment this out now i can really feel that it's starting to get buggy but it's been my experience this whole week I can go ahead and rerun this now it's gonna like it now it's happy it takes time which i don't like it takes quite a lot of time but it's running it is connecting to this terminal process if it turns out that you're a heavy excel user i was able to download a spreadsheet from the internet with huge amounts of table data and embedded formulas it turns out that this device is able to handle any sort of filtering tab switching execution of mathematical computations and formatting with ease Creating diagrams and graphs seemed to be a joke, automating with Excel functions was flawless, and even speedily move and copy data in cells was quick. Jumping into Excel, I just want to let you guys know that I'm no Excel wizard, and I went ahead and learned a bit of Excel. So if you guys appreciate that, well, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for a lot more. Now jumping around, it's no problem. Going all the way down, it's pretty quick. We can go ahead and select the whole table, of course, copy all this data, Make sure we copy that jump all the way down and if we want to paste this data again it does it effortlessly and we can jump all the way down again paste even more so there's no lag jump all the way up jump all the way down we have about 39,980 lines something really cool we can do is to add two columns and we can separate this data by a delimiter in our case it's going to be the dash so if we select this whole column right here Select this text of columns, click next. We make sure we have the dash there and we click next and then finish. Yes, and there you go. It's all separated into three. We can go ahead and scroll all the way down. And as you can see, did it very easily. No lagging, nothing like that. Something really cool we can do for the profits column is to separate them by profits and losses. So we can go into home, conditional formatting right here highlight cells with rules greater than and we are going to be using a green fill for greater than zero okay does it pretty quickly and then we are going to use a red fill for less than zero and as you guys can see everything is formatted which is pretty cool and for those who are interested in filtering well you can select your whole row right here make sure your filter is enabled and we can filter this by using city. Unselect everything and we can click, for example, maybe Atlantic City. We only have one row for that. Maybe Atlanta. Now we're starting to have a lot more Bristol, Broken Arrow, Brumfield, and all of it. As you guys can see, it's so quick. I can also demonstrate some Excel functions. For example, if I do insert here, I can use this column to use this customer ID with the right function and make sure I can filter by the five last digits, click enter and there you go. I can drag this all the way down and it's pretty quick to render that data. Also something that I've already gone ahead and done is use the if conditional. Now let me just delete this column right here 
retype what I had before. So I want to pick all the numbers that are above zero. Make this whole text bigger, expand this column, put this towards the middle, and write my condition. If this is bigger than zero, I want to go ahead and print profit. And if it's less than zero, I want to go ahead and print losses. There you go, we can drag this all the way down to here. And as you guys can see, the red represents losses and the green represents the profits. And one last thing I can go ahead and show you with Excel is pivot table. So we can go ahead and choose a whole table like that then go into insert pivot table, click OK. We can maybe use the customer ID somewhere here, drag it to rows and then we can use the profit. And as you guys can see, all of these customer IDs have generated a certain amount of profits towards the company, I guess. Moving forward, I recently needed to use Word and Safari with Lucidchart in order to generate some UML diagrams. Since I don't know my code by heart, I also needed my code editor to be alive with some processes running in the background. The creation of diagrams on a web app, exporting them and pasting them into Word while formatting my document was an easy task. To make this even more interesting, since I was bored, I decided to open the podcast app and tune in into some Joe Rogan to make my homework funner. And alas, I wanted the keyboard and PowerPoint for the final test. Now, keep in mind that on my left, I have Safari with Lucidchart open and a bunch of YouTube videos already running in the background. And towards the bottom, I have my podcast, which is currently running on a Joe Rogan episode. And I've also have my PowerPoint towards the right with a little presentation I had to do for school. Now guys, Word and PowerPoint don't take that many resources. It's very, very hard to start lagging PowerPoint and to start lagging Word. I've done this with ease. All the work I've done throughout this week has been done on the MacBook Pro M1. I had to get this PowerPoint done with a few hours and it was very, very easy. There's no lag, everything's so smooth, very quick. I didn't have issues doing anything. I actually opened Photoshop did this while PowerPoint was open and I just imported it right here and everything was so smooth. Along with Word, this is just a little sample template I found online with about 4,000 words. If I go ahead and select everything, I have, yeah, 4,000 words in total with a total of 10 pages. You can go ahead and even export this thing that I have in Lucidchart, JPEG, download, generates a file for me. I can go ahead and even drag it right here and everything is so quick and so smooth. I can even take this file right here, crop this, make it smaller, press enter and boom. Very quick, nothing is going to stop Word. And of course, if we check our activity monitor, we can see that Lucidchart is the actual web app that's taking most of our RAM resources. Here you have Word and at the very bottom you have PowerPoint. So of course, not much memory utilization and also not much CPU utilization. Well, overall, the MacBook Pro M1 has shown to be a great little laptop for productivity and is more than capable of handling light to medium content creation. Keep in mind that over the following months, multiple companies will be working to allow native support of their products on this magnificent chip. Honestly, Apple, congratulations. I truly think this has been the best product you've launched since the MacBook Pro's 2015. I am excited to see the 16 inch in the upcoming years. People of the internet, take care and I will see you in the MacBook Air 4 developers video.